morning everybody this as promised is my video on making a frozen mocha now I know with a live stream you're supposed to wait and build an audience but I've got ice that's melting so we ain't doing that we're just gonna dive right into it I've got set out here my ingredients and what I didn't grab was my recipe so hold on just a sec I don't want to miss anything which is something that I would certainly do so we are we have chocolate of course since this is mocha and we've got powdered erythritol now i am normally not a name brand snob because i grew up with the cheapest man on the face of the earth so i normally go for the cheap stuff but i found that it does make a difference in these two products instances that it's a good idea to go with the name brand because I have tried buying powdered erythritol that was not name brand and it's just not as it's not as reliable as far as the, how sweet it's going to be. So with Swerve, I know exactly what I'm getting. Now the other thing I would recommend you do if you're going to make this recipe is make sure you get the powdered or the confectioner's erythritol because erythritol is not like sugar. It doesn't dissolve in water. So if it's crunchy to begin with, it's going to stay crunchy. And the crystals of the erythritol are kind of crunchy. So I like the powdered erythritol when I'm cooking with this product because it, it doesn't have that texture like you're eating sand. So I would certainly recommend that you use a powdered erythritol if you're cooking anything with erythritol. The other thing is I always thought powdered chocolate was powdered chocolate. I, I'm not a baker per se. I, I like to cook, but I'm not a great baker. So I always thought that cocoa powder was cocoa powder. And when I tried this, no, there's a huge difference between Hershey's or Nestle's, that cheap stuff that you buy at the store, and this, I don't know how you pronounce this, Girardelli? Anyway, but this is some good stuff. If you want it to be super chocolatey and smooth, mm, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, the other thing is the recipe, the original recipe I found actually called for co cold coffee. But if you're like me, you make things on the fly and you don't have cold coffee sitting around. So I thought to myself, well, how about I just buy instant coffee and use that instead? So any sort of instant coffee will do. This is what happened to be available when I placed my Walmart order for pickup. I normally have, I've gotten a couple other different brands, but I'm not a coffee snob. So to me, coffee's coffee. Now, I'm sure those of you watching this who like to drink coffee are probably appalled that I just said that. But coffee's not my thing. So... I just use uh, now if you want if you have cold coffee you could try that but I just use this because uh, it's easier and I can make it up ahead of time and I don't have to worry about having cold coffee on hand uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing it oh, uh, the other thing is this is xanthan gum it's a thickener so you put a little bit in there a little bit of this in there to kind of thicken it a tiny bit if you're going to more of a, a, a keto or a low carb lifestyle and you don't use cornstarch to thicken things. Xanthan gum is a pretty good substitute. It's not a one-to-one -one substitute. If that interrupted the live stream or not, but we're going to keep going here. Uh, the other thing, I've got some ice. We'll need that later. And then I got a little tiny bit of salt that we'll need. And I think that's it. The recipe that I found, oh, and heavy whipping cream. The recipe that I found originally called for vanilla but we found that we like it just as well without the vanilla so we have made the decision to omit that <clears throat> now this recipe is going to make 16 ounces of frozen mocha and we're going to start out with erythritol right here um another thing i recommend if you're making these is you know how you take brown sugar and you pack it in well i did the same thing with my erythritol so i'm going to do three tablespoons of powdered erythritol swerve if you're using another brand, you may have to use more. So I just like this because it's consistent and I don't have to figure out, well, what do I need to add today? So I'm going to put three tablespoons of that in there. Now, if you've got a blender, you can use that. I just have this, so I use it because it's handy. I don't have to get a big, huge blender out and wash all the parts for that. So I got three tablespoons of powdered erythritol. And then I think it's two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And yes, according to my uh, according to my directions, 
it is two tablespoons. Now, I don't pack this in. I just do it normally. Kind of shake it off. And I know my, my friend Dan, he's, a, he's a, like a real chef. So he's probably appalled that I'm not weighing my ingredients. But I don't, I'm, it's just not something I've ever done. And uh, ain't nobody got time for that. So two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And yes, I'm cross-contaminating, I suppose. But that's just what I do. I, I mean, I hate watching those cooking shows where they have everything in all those prep bowls. Because I'm thinking, I want to wash all those. I'm just going to use the same tablespoon over and over again because that's just what I do. Uh, the other thing is, is we're going to put in the original recipe called the three ounces of cold coffee. And I'm actually, I've actually doubled the original recipe. So I'm going to put these. Uh, the cool thing is these make six, six fluid ounces. So I'm going to put in uh, a teaspoon of this. So a teaspoon of this makes six fluid ounces of coffee. So I'm going to put in one teaspoon. Now, if you like a lot of coffee, I suppose you could put more in there. But as I stated previously, I'm not a huge fan of coffee. The only reason I drink frozen coffees is because it tastes like a shake. So that is the whole purpose. So if you want it to taste more coffee-y, put more coffee in. If you don't like coffee, it's not super overwhelming with the flavor of coffee. So if you don't like coffee, you don't have to put it in there. But even if you do have a little bit in there, it's not that bad. Uh, the other thing is, is we're going to put two teaspoon, two uh, pinches of pink Himalayan salt. And I'm almost down here, so we're going to say one and a two. And then on our xanthan gum, my hands are clean. I did wash them right before I started this. So, and then a pinch of xanthan gum. Let me make sure that's all my dry ingredients. I think so. You would think as many times as I've made this, I would have it memorized, but sadly I do not. Okay, the other thing I've got is I've got a third of water here, and I did pour that up because I didn't want to have to run to the water jug and then come back. So I'm going to pour that in there, and then we're also going to do a third of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Hey, Haley. All right, so here's our third of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Pour it in there. Uh, and then, now I have this handy thing, so I just fill it up. I don't know if you can see it. There's actually a max fill line on here. So I normally just fill this thing up with ice to the max fill line. But if you don't have this, uh, I'm going to actually measure out how much ice I'm using. I'm guessing... I don't know. Let's say a cup and a half and see how close I get it. This is two cups of ice. So we're going to put put this in there and see how close I get. Then we'll see what's left when I get there. Uh, how close am I to the max fill? Yeah, it's pretty close. And we got about maybe three-fourths of a cup left here. So a cup and a quarter. And sometimes I put a little more because I like to have a lot. So that is what we're going to do. And then we just screw this on. Uh, cover your ears. This is going to be loud. Uh, I've been trying to think how to make this not loud, but I mean, it's just going to be a little loud. But it's only going to be for a few seconds, so shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I like to shake it up just because, I don't know. Yes, I know it's a blender, and it's going to mix it up. And my mixing is not as good as that. But sometimes if I put too much ice in there, it can not mix up top very well. And... Uh, Oh, I need some more ice in there. I'll put some more. Because once I shook it up and the ice got settled down, it's not very icy. That's too much ice. Let me take that big hunk out. All right, there we go. And it's probably still too much, but it's okay. Because I like I like it being very icy. I don't like, I hate when I go and get a frozen coffee and it's just runny. I'm like, well, I just... If I was going to do this, I'm going to do cold coffee. Okay, cover your ears. We're going to run this. I don't know how many seconds. I just kind of earball it. So cover your ears. We're going to run this. Okay, maybe not. I'm going to twist that. Here we go. So I run it for, like, five seconds. And then I shake it. And if I still hear chunks in there, I'll run it a little more. So hold on. Cover your ears. That sounds pretty dang good. All right, and yes, I beat it on the counter every time just because that's what I do. So here we go. Slushy goodness. 
All right, I got a cup here. Let's get it back and then pour it in there. And since I added more ice, see how it's kind of pretty, pretty thick. I'll pour that in there. I got a little extra there. So I'll drink that after the live stream. All right, the other thing I do is I actually make whipped cream and I use confectioners uh, erythritol for this as well. Uh, I didn't use stevia because I didn't have it or this uh, powdered um, swerve because I didn't have it at the time. So I used an off brand. Now when I make it with Swerve, I usually do two cups of heavy whipping cream and I think two and a half tablespoons of powdered Swerve. But I didn't have it, so I had to tweak the recipe. And this is two cups of heavy whipping cream. And then I think I had to actually put four tablespoons of this other sweetener in it. So this, this is awesome. So it's gonna whip it up, but it's a special kind of thing. So I gotta shake it up a few times to make sure it's mixed up. And then sometimes it'll squirt out some cream, but most of the time it's like whipped cream. So here we go. Oh yeah, baby. That's looking good. And if you like lots of whipped cream, like my husband does, uh, I normally put less in his because he'd rather have whipped cream than uh, <laughs> the frozen mocha. And then there we go. So we've got our 100% sugar-free frozen mocha. And honestly, I like it just as well as the stuff that we get at the store. Now, I will say that if you're going straight from regular sugar to uh, a sugar-free frozen mocha, you may be like, no, oh, that's not very sweet. But if you've kind of gone sugar-free for a little bit, it tastes really good. Not that it tastes bad, but because I've given it to friends who drink sugary stuff, and they think it's great. Uh, gave it to my friend's kids the other day, and they couldn't get enough of it. So, anyway. That is it. And I probably should have probably should have used that. Mush that up a little bit better than what I did. Say lobby. Um, the other thing I'll say, if you like these, um, I, I was making them every night when I first found the recipe. And my mother-in-law said, well, and it was a chore because I had to get everything out and measure it all. So my mother-in-law is like, well, if you'll make those up ahead of time, that'll work out a lot better. So I did that. It took her brilliant suggestion and did that. Went down to the dollar, the everything's a dollar store or the Dollar Tree and got this package of three of these little tubs for a buck and so what i do is when we run out of, i fill these up put everything put all the dry ingredients in there and then put them on the shelf and that way when it's time to make it i dump this in dump in my third of a cup of water third of a cup of heavy whipping cream and then we're good to go um, they have a little gasket right there so it kind of keeps it a little airtight probably not that great because it's a 33 cent whatever but it's pretty handy, so we'll take these, put them up, and then when we want to eat, drink uh, frozen mocha, I just pull them off the shelf and then toss it in there with water. Did I put the coffee in there? Yeah, I did. I know I talked about it. Did I actually put it in there? I think I did, yeah. Okay. So anyway, that is it. If you've got questions, feel free to put them in the box below or... Whatever it is you do, if you've got questions, feel free to reach out to me. Just add liberty at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you later.